Mina-san, konnichiwa, this is David. And Nina. And I'm um, doing a review of the MG1100 Hyakushiki. Um, this He's is the... tall, so it's a little weird to get him on the screen. It, yeah, he is actually pretty tall. Um, this is the new MG Hyakushiki that was just released recently. Yeah, he's five. Yeah, this is like pretty much one of my favorite Gundam kits. Um, like, and Gundams in general. I love the Hyakushiki. Uh, it's just really sleek, really elegant. Um, it's got like the sort of, it's indicative of like a Roman soldier or something. It's really great stuff. And the shine on this gold is unbeatable. Yeah, it's, it's nuanced. It's got like little hints of silver, like aluminum coming coming through, but it's yeah, but it's definitely gold. Yeah, and it's just like it's flat enough and uniform enough that it works very well. Um, but there's a lot of complexity to it, so it's it is a great finish. It is pretty as hell. Uh, I love that so much. Um, so our Hyakushiki. This is just with the basic stickers on it. I didn't even I didn't even put all of the stickers on it, but they're all pretty cool. Um, like it's got just the the basic designators on the shoulders that, you know, the Hakushiki ones. But you did panel line. Um, no, actually I didn't. You didn't. Oh wait, no, I I did. I did panel line a little bit, but there wasn't really much to panel line. Um, it's impossible to resist those vents. Yeah, so, some of it like just this part right here. Like I didn't do much. Um, okay, so. Let's see. It is a really fine MG. Uh, it is fully articulated in the way that you would expect an MG to be articulated. Um, its leg can go all the way back. Um, it can do full splits if it needs to. Um, the skirts are fully rotating nice. um, with these little metal effects on the inside because of the uh, because of the gold. Mm. So that's a great touch because you never see those parts. You never see right. those parts, but they look great. Um, and so you have full range of motion there. Um, oh. And he's solid too. Yes, the joints are so firm, so so solid. We should all be so lucky. Yeah. Um, and let's see. Zero Cool is singing in the background. He's a little sick today, so. Okay, and so we, uh, as far as weapons go, we have that one. Is it just a little extra tube piece? Uh, the gold? Yeah. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. good stuff. Um, and reminds me of the tube that's on the Yes. I and mean, that's not a coincidence. So that snaps up there just fine. And then we have this bazooka piece which comes down like that and it's great i mean some mgs do this and so even some hgs but i love the the hidden peg that holds it into the hand mm. um, but it's not obtrusive whenever you're just sort of casually posing it oh, what grade is this? This, is this is an mg yeah, yeah. okay oh. and then we have our wings yeah these and are lens flare when you turn them out yeah <laughs> Yeah, so these um, these actually have a full range of motion as well. These are double jointed, or even actually no, they're triple jointed, uh, because they have a joint there, they have the ball joint, and then they have a rocker on the end there. So these are fully posable, which is nice, um, and you know they left no detail untouched, even if you have them folded out to the full length there. Um, you've got that little piece that is otherwise hidden. That's great. We have our vents here, um, the red vents. Those are nice. You have our our skirt backing here with the beam saber uh, handles on it. I've got one beam saber already assembled, and these are adaptable beam sabers. They have that peg there that um, helps hold them into the hand. Eat it, Jedi. Yeah, these are. And look at the. It's not just a straight plastic piece. It's got this no. big fat build up the streamlines down to the little tip yeah yeah um and this isn't the same color that you're used to with um mg beam sabers so oh, that's okay. nice it's a soft almost yellow green oh it's the same color as your, uh, your here nail polish my daiso nail polish yeah okay um 
we have a little bit of motion in the feet, not a whole bunch, like mm. it's nothing to write home about, but it can basically grip uneven ground, um, which is nice, particularly for a suit that's made to be used in space. Um, our chest can go down quite a bit and up quite a bit, so he can look fully up, like if he's flying or whatever, mm. um, he can do that. Or if he's doing chest rolls and belly dancing. Yeah, or, you know, if he just wants to put his chest up and look like a badass or whatever, um, he can do that. As he does. Yeah. Um, you know, arms are just full range of motion. Um, these skirts, or the skirts, sorry, the shoulders, um, they come up all the way and they fold up and down fully. Mm. Um, so you have, you know, pretty good range there. Um... As far as the MG hands go, these are, I am so used to building RGs. There's been a lot of RG releases lately. Um, but these are really nice MG hands. They're very sturdy. Um, they look a little big, but they're they're the, the sturdiest MG hands I've ever seen, yeah. which is great. They're really solid. Each of the fingers is fully articulated. And you know what, if they have to make them a little bit bigger to make them more useful, that's okay. Yeah, but these are, these are such solid hands. They hold like I've never seen an MG hold. Uh, which is great. I, yeah, you had him closed up with that beam saber out. For a month or more. Yeah, and yeah. there was no sign of it you know, falling out. Yeah. Okay, and so holding the beam saber. I'm gonna do... And then I wonder if he could carry some of the bigger, heavier weapons from like the, um, the astrays and stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. But he wouldn't because they wouldn't match his, you know paint job and yeah god knows the man represents style if nothing else yes char plus style equals yes. you know the way things should be yeah. okay so there's the hyakushiki mg i've held off on reviewing it for a while because i'm just totally neglectful like that but this is a great kit i love this kit it is maybe my favorite mg like it's, it's beautiful. It's it's amazing. So you like this better than that? Well, I'm a I'm a big huge fan of astrays. I love my astrays. I love my blue frames, my red frames, stuff like that. But um, this is just a really solid kit. Like, yeah. I you'd have to go out of your way to break this. <laughs> like, mm. it's this is this is the kind of thing I expect to have this from for years to come, mm. and it's going to be in this exact same condition. Yeah. Um, so that's that's awesome. I almost wish that I would have gotten the the mega bazooka launcher for it, but <laughs> that up so much space. it really would have. Um, it would have been kind of absurd. Yeah. So can people find him? Yeah, this is a totally like standard release. You should okay. be able to find this pretty much anywhere. Um, you know, if your Gundam vendor does not have the MG Hyakushiki, like, what do they have? <laughs> um, seriously. So, um... And is he reasonable? You think the price point... Oh, um, you know, uh... I can't remember offhand how much I paid for him, honestly. For a while. Um, it was a little while ago. Um, I want to say... I want to say he probably retailed for about 7,000 yen. Um, I think I paid, like... 5,000 yen for him, so about $40. Mm. Um, at that price, it's a steal. Like, honestly, like in America, I probably would have paid upwards of 100. Yeah, yeah. upper, yeah, about 100, 120 at most. Um, depends on where I got them, but. Then if you have the money, that's not, a, that's not ridiculous. Yeah, like. If you don't have the money, it's ridiculous. If if MG money, kits in, outside of Japan are expensive because they they're hard as hell to ship. Yeah. Um, but. I, I don't know how much I don't know how much Bandai is asking for it or how much uh, vendors outside of Japan are asking for it. He's also heavy. He's he's heavy. He's a he's, he's a great seriously kit. Seriously heavy. Um, this is this is my favorite basic MG. Like there's not very much to it, but yeah. it's perfect for what it is. And so it looks gorgeous. Yeah, this is this is this is a great centerpiece. It goes good anywhere. Um, and seriously like and you don't have to paint him right. <laughs> like he's great there's no parts of him that are embarrassing that you have to paint yeah yeah there are a couple of little minor things I'm that i probably would fix burning right here right here um let's see if we can focus oh the nub yeah there's a little gate nub exposed and i know that's not my fault because there's one on this side as well uh -huh. and they're pretty much identical but like i don't even notice it at a distance yeah um too busy being like oh shiny yeah it's 
it's a gorgeous kit. So if you're even remotely interested in Hyakushiki, um, and if you're even in remotely interested in building MG kits, um, the Venn diagram there between quality MG and, you, you know, Hyaku. It was, it was perfectly reasonable yeah. MG build. Um, it actually went really quickly. Um, so this might be a good first MG. Yeah, it'd be a good first MG. I, I like, if I were doing a first MG, like what I would probably recommend people to do is like, I don't know, the Gundam Mark II or something, sure. but this is this is a great kit. Um, it's no harder, really, than the Gundam Mark II. Um, it's, it's really, really solid engineering, and it's actually newer than the Gundam Mark II as far as that goes. Um, it's probably, I would say it's probably easier a little, and a little bit more efficient um, build than the Mark II, come to think of it. So, yeah, build this kit. Like, build seriously, kit. If, build it it's it's great run don't walk i love it i love it i can't sing its praises enough <laughs> um and you know char right so or quattro i guess um yeah okay so if you have any uh if you have any recommendations requests that sort of thing let us know mm -hmm. but until then matane, matane.